Josh in Medford, Oregon, you're next. Great to have you here. How are you doing? I'm great. Thanks. You bet. So I'm a, I'm a psychology major at a university in Southern Oregon, and I am having some trouble with uh, some of the professors who like to tell me what their sexuality is. You mean you have professors it's, who they, they insist on telling you what what you mean, like whether they're gay or straight or bi or trans? Yes. Yeah, they, they want to make the announcement. They want to make sure everybody knows. And I don't I if this was in a corporate situation, that would be sexual harassment. But they are they just want to. And, it, and it's usually sociology professors who want to put that information out there. And it's like, I'm ready to sue for sexual harassment. This is just really bothersome. Well, why, why sexual harassment? What do, you, what do you think they're doing by announcing their sexual orientation to you? Well, I'm, I'm considering the, uh, what would happen if a straight, say a straight man, announced that he was straight. It would be, he would be seen as... Well, in Oregon, they might stone him. <laughs> right. Yeah, they might uh well he'd be seen as maybe advertising or I don't know, like he's just some kind of D bag. But right, so you're you're questioning you're what you want to know why they're doing it. I I wanna know what I can do to stop it. I'm oh, I, you can't. it's really bothersome. It's, you can't stop it. You can't they're gonna keep doing it until you love it. That's the whole point. I, that's this, never that, gonna this happen. Is, they are, well, I know, but I mean, that's the objective is to force it. You will, Josh, you will not only like it, you will love it. That That's the attitude behind this. They're forcing it on you. They want that to be their identity. It's a, uh, it, it's how they want to be known. And, and they're, they're indeed, they're demanding using their authority over you as the professor, demanding that you accept it and then further demanding that you like it. Be back, folks. Thanks, Josh, for the call. More on this in a moment. And there are all kinds of people who are, it's like the, the last caller. Let me look at the clock here. Oops. Let me take a break. I'm not teasing you. I just, I just got to take a break. We'll come back, and I'll remember the last caller who talked about his professors who are forcing on him and the others in the class their sexual identity or orientation or what have you. It's all part of the same thing. It's, it, it's the inculcation. It is the, uh, I don't want to call it propaganda. It's not, it's not quite that, but it's close. Anyway, stick with us. We'll be right back. Don't go. Now, as, as for uh, what I was going to say about this uh, the guy, Josh, who's faced with these professors and professorettes who are forcing their sexual orientation on him. That's classic liberalism. I don't, I don't mean to sound cliched here. I mean, the term liberal has become even a cliche, but call it leftism or socialism or whatever. But these, these are the people we're talking about yesterday. The group think, the consensus, you will agree, you will accept, you will like, you will love, or else... And you see what happens to people outside the cocoon. And so this is a warning. With these professors or I am whatever they tell you they are, it's a warning. You better accept it. The, the normal reaction, why do you have to ram this down our throat? We don't care. Okay, you're trans. Okay, you're, you're bi or you're gay. We don't care. Why, why are you forcing this? And it's, it's, it's a way to provoke. It is a way to, uh, with the authority that a professor holds in the classroom over students, it's a way to force acceptance. But it's also rooted in identity politics. This is one of the most harmful things happening to our culture, the whole concept of identity politics and grievance policy, because what it does is create victims. And, and there's a political party that benefits from victims 
and a political party that promotes grievance politics and identity politics, the Democrat Party. And they hope to benefit by more people feeling aggrieved with America or being victimized by America. Once you accept that you're a victim, well, the rest is easy because nothing's your fault. You have a built-in excuse for failure. It wasn't your fault. You're a victim of something. You're a victim of the white supremacy. You're a victim of white privilege. You're a victim of the patriarchy. You are a victim of corporate greed. You're a victim of whatever. But at the same time, you're also hopeless. Because once you're a victim, you're abandoning self-reliance. Because you have to, as a victim, you have to believe there's nothing you can do to alleviate your situation other than to get mad and other than to raise hell and then start demanding social justice or whatever it is. And you join the crowd, you join the mob, and you feel good. You're doing something, except you're sitting there as an average failure. And the Democrat Party comes along and wants to reward that average failure by promising that they'll fix it for you. Or that they'll get even with the people mistreating you. Get even with the people victimizing you. And identity poli politics is, is a hidden way also of attacking the majority now, the majority can be racial, it can be a numerical majority, it can be a way of thinking. But whatever minority membership, victimization is, that's the place to be. As far as too, way too many young people think so. Uh, you don't want to be among the oppressors. You don't want to be in the majority. You want to be with these people making life unfair. So all it's doing is dividing uh, the people in the country. And the media, which shapes a lot of public perception, is always on the side of the victims. Because the media thinks what they're doing is speaking truth to power. That they're holding the powerful accountable. Except when the powerful are Democrats and liberals, they don't do that. They join them. The only people they hold accountable are people that disagree with them. So it's, uh, I hope this guy at the classroom in Oregon has the guts to withstand the assault and, uh, and deal with it and still get a passing grade. Quick timeout, back with much more right after this. Don't go away.